Thanks everybody. It's uh, Tony Shelding, the National Secretary of the Transport Workers Union. I'm here to highlight a major concern. We've seen these dramatic events in these last number of days with police raids, um, suspected terrorists, um, and more activities uh, taking place to try to expose um, the potential risks that our airports are facing at the moment. The, economy is the airport economy is critical to the Australian economy. Not only are there tens of thousands of jobs uh, that are involved with regards to the airport uh, industry, but also tourism more generally. What happens at the moment at our airports is a crime. We've seen a situation that has been evolving over the past decade where there is high staff turnover, lack of training, poor conditions, and no whistleblower protections. There are only two companies in the airline industry that have agreed with the demand from the workforce that they have institutional training on basic and develop security arrangements for our airports. We only have two places, that's Virgin and Alpha Catering, of all the companies in the aviation industry, and there's been a fundamental failure by airport owners and the federal government to protect our airports. The eyes and ears of tens of thousands of people that work at our airports could be in, employed if they were properly trained, they were properly maintained within those workplaces, we didn't have such a high turnover with no training. I'm fine with questions. Exactly what sort of training are you talking about? Do you want them to get the they're not already? Well, it's very fundamental training about making sure that there is, uh, they're alert to potential substances that come through. This is a question of both national security, but also a question of criminality that can occur in airports. It's quite clear that we have a porous uh, borders through our airports. There is a capacity to employ and train uh, uh, workers, tens of thousands of people, to be very clear, very observant, and be very clear about who they can report to. As it stands at the moment, there is several different authorities that have responsibility for our airports, and no appropriate coordinating body that takes the responsibility of those activities. We have been investigating matters of airport security now for over a decade, and as recently as one month ago, after contacting several departments, they're still failing to come uh, to engage and say who is responsible for some airport breaches that have recently occurred at our airports. Tony, as a, a well-known journalist, I and all my colleagues have to renew a national business media pass every couple of years. In spite of having given our bona fides, just to have certain acceptance of certain events. How extraordinary do you find it that part-timers will turn up for day one on the job and given a part-time security clearance with access to the materials that could be put on the plane? Well, this is absolutely appalling to see that there is part-time, high turnover companies like AeroCare, 3,200 employees, over 1,000 employees are casual, another close to 2,000 are part-time on low hours, high turnover staff, and those turnover employees are not security checked, they don't have ASIO checks, they don't have police checks, and they're going airside right next to the refuelling of our jets and airplanes that are flying in out of this country and around Australia. Well, what, what sort of thing are those people doing? What are they actually Doing with people that you're talking about. What sort of work? The, these, the people that are carrying out this work are from baggage handlers uh, to uh, uh, ground crew. Security guards are not being properly screened before they're taking out the responsibility because of high turnover, low pay, and a porous system that just does not apply to protect our borders. Which specific jobs at the airport do you believe do not have adequate training? Can you just give us a shopping list of all those jobs where you think the security clearance is not uh, adequate? Uh, catering trucks delivering to planes, uh, refueling of planes, of jets, uh, security staff and screening facilities, looking at baggage belts. Uh, we have the whole box and dice of every job carried out there. We see technical staff going into and maintenance staff going into areas without proper security checks. We have thousands of people literally in a year going to our airports in the most high risk areas without having an ASIO or a police check and it's purely because of money rather than because of security. Uh, Tony, in the interview with your uh, colleagues um, at United Voice you made a submission to set an inquiry on airport security. They called, among 
other things for the federal government to basically just take this over the way, or some of these functions anyway, the way it's done in the U.S., where you have, uh, you know, federal officers of the federal U.S. government doing security screening full stop. Which, is that something you'd like to see happen here? But we've, uh, we've uh, like United Voice, we've made submissions like many others to say this, to talk about the security arrangements or the lack thereof at many of our airports. Regional airports are particularly porous. Freight movements are particularly porous. It wasn't so long ago, only a matter of uh, a number of few years ago, where a UPS flight uh, had a bomb on its plane on the flight that, that arrived out of the Middle East. Freight is also critical, and there are not checks being taken place. And security arrangements need to be highly geared, highly trained, and have the capacity to turn around and make sure we do not have high turnover whether that be by direct hire, direct engagement by the government, or whether we properly train private arrangements. Tony, how many of our regional airports do you describe as particularly poor? Well, directly from flight attendants, uh, from bagging staff, uh, we've identified already a dozen, and we're, pro and we're now going through every regional airport to identify security risks. But it's not something where we're not whistleblowing publicly when it should be done privately. The whole country knows these areas are porous. Thousands of people that work at the airports, running into the tens of thousands, know that these borders are porous. And it's about time the government and airports step in to clean it up. What about um, the, uh, I mean, just to be clear, the, your release today uh, mentioned some of these porous airports. But are you, where there is no screening for Qantas Link jets, are you saying that there should be screening for those airports for those Qantas Link jets? There should be appropriate screening at every regional airport. There should be appropriate equipment, people appropriately trained, and freight should also be included along with passengers. Well, quite clearly there's been a uh, litany of examples over the last decade where there are security risks. This is not whistleblowing when it should be done privately. Tens of thousands of people are aware of these risks that work at our airports right now. It was only in the early 2000s that we had a Qantas employee who thankfully just before the Olympics left um, uh, Qantas employment and was then discovered in France and was subsequently arrested as a terrorist. We have very porous borders. We have to have people well-trained and equipped. We need to have an appropriate fund to turn around and train those people about their responsibilities and capabilities. And we need to have the owners of our airports taking this matter seriously, along with the federal government. Currently, corporations, uh, businesses that make money on this uh, Sydney airport are uh, tasked with their own screening and checks. Should there not be a regulatory body, uh, as Ian was perhaps suggesting, maybe more Look, I think it's quite clear, and that is that driving for profit runs counter to having the best security. You have to make sure that you have the government providing a service, whether they be privately engaged, but certainly government oversighted in an appropriate way, with, de with decent training, proper skilling, and proper capacity to make sure their airports are safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.